Now let's start off by defining what the square of a number is. To answer that, first I want you to imagine a square. Since all the sides of a square are equal, we can find the area of a square even if we know just one side. That is, the area can be obtained by multiplying the same side with itself. Just like that, the square of any number is equal to the product of the number when it is multiplied by itself. Basically, multiplying a number by itself gives you the square of that number. So, 2 into 2 can be written as 2 raised to the power 2 or 2 raised to 2. It is also called 2 square. Similarly, 4 into 4 can be written as 4 raised to 2 and the number can be called 4 square. Basically, if we have a number n and we want to find its square, then its square will be n into n, that is n raised to 2, which is called n square. And if you compare it to the geometrical square, then n square would be the area of the square that is formed with the side n. Let us now go through the squares of the first 20 natural numbers. I hope you remember what natural numbers are. They are the counting numbers which start with 1, 2, 3 and go on till infinity. So, the first 20 natural numbers are 1, 2, 3 and so on till 18, 19 and 20. The squares of the first 20 numbers are important and we need to learn them by heart because that really speeds up our calculations. You see, squares are used to solve a lot of problems in algebra and geometry and they are even used in scientific formulae. So, let us quickly go through them. The square of 1 is 1, of 2 is 4, of 3 is 9 and so on. Then we have the square of 11 as 121, the square of 12 as 144, and that of 13 as 169. On and on it goes till we have the square of 19 as 361, and finally the square of 20 as 400. And that's all. Now these squares that we just saw, they are all perfect squares. By definition, any number that can be divided in such a way so that its divisor is equal to the quotient is called a perfect square. That sounds like a complicated statement, so let's break it down to understand it better. We'll take a perfect square that we know, say 25. Now, if we divide 25 by 5, then we get the answer as 5. In this case, 25 is the dividend, 5 is the divisor, and 5 is also the quotient. Clearly, the divisor is equal to the quotient, so we get 25 as a perfect square. Similarly, if we divide 36 by 6, we get the quotient as 6. Even in this case, the divisor is 6 and the quotient is also 6, which gives us divisor is equal to the quotient. So, the numbers 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36 and so on are all perfect squares. There are many interesting things that we can note about squares and these interesting things are called properties of squares. Let me show you. Observe the squares of 1 and 9. They are 1 and 81 respectively. Now, look at the squares of 11 and 19. They are 121 and 361 respectively. If we notice the last digit of all these squares, we'll see that it is 1. Just like that, if we see the squares of 2 and 8, they are 4 and 64, respectively. And likewise, squares of 12 and 18 are 144 and 324, respectively. Can you see how each of these squares' last digit is 4? Next, let's have a look at the squares of 3 and 7. They are 9 and 49 while the squares of 13 and 17 are 169 and 289 respectively. So for the numbers whose last digits are 3 and 7, their squares will end with the digit 9. Similarly, the squares of 4, 6, 14 and 16 all end with the digit 6. You can see it for yourself. The square of 4 is 16, the square of 6 is 36, 14 square is 196 and the square of 16 is 256. 
With all these numbers out of our way, can you tell me that one number whose square ends with the same number repeatedly? Okay, here's a hint. What is the square of 5? That's right, it's 25. And what is the square of 15? It is 225. So, you see how the last digit of the square of a number ending in 5 is always going to be 5. In fact, the last two digits of the square of any number ending in 5 will always be 25. Don't believe me? Check it yourself by finding the squares of the numbers like 25 and 35. Now, last but not the least, for the numbers ending in 0, the square of such numbers will have twice the number of zeros that are present in the number itself. For example, 10 square is equal to 100. Here, 10 has a single zero, while its square, 100, has twice the number of zeros as 10. That is 2 into 1, 2 zeros. At the same time, 200 square is equal to 40,000 where 200 has two zeros and 40,000 has two into two, four zeros. Also, 9,000 square is equal to 8 crore 10 lakh. Why don't you count the numbers here to verify our statement? So one more observation that we can make is that the square of any number ending in zero will always have even number of zeros. And even if a number ends with an odd number of zeros, then it cannot be a perfect square. This means while 400 is a perfect square, 4000 is not. Another interesting point to note about squares is that the square of an even number is always even. And the square of an odd number is odd. Now, when we are observing the squares of the first 20 natural numbers, we found out that the only digits that can be present in the units place of the square of any number are 0, 1, 4, 5, 6 and 9, right? So we can find out whether a number is a perfect square or not just by looking at the last digit of that number. If I give you a number, um, say 28, can you tell me whether it is a perfect square or no? Just look at the last digit of the number. It is 8. And we know that 8 cannot be the last digit of any square. Therefore, 28 is not a perfect square. So, we can conclude that the digit at the unit's place of a square can never be 2, 3, 7 and 8. Hence, if a number is ending in any of these, then we know that that number is definitely not a square. Which means that a number like 1047, 1057, and 7298 can never be a square of any number. But does that mean that every number ending in 0, 1, 4, 5, 6, or 9 will be a perfect square? Let's look at a number, say, 301. We see that it's ending in 1, right? Now we also know that the square of 17 is 289 while the square of 18 is 324. The number 301 lies in between 289 and 324. But since there is no natural number between 17 and 18, we can be assured that 301 is not a perfect square. Do you know what this means? It means that not every number ending in the digits 0, 1, 4, 5, 6 or 9 will be a perfect square. I hope with that you're a little more familiar with squares. So, if I showed you a few numbers, will you be able to identify which amongst them is a perfect square? I hope you have fun doing this and I'll see you with more problems and concepts in the next segment. Bye bye. Tutormate. For more amazing videos, download the free app on Apple App Store and Google Play Store.